All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm so excited that you are here. We are ex excited to jump in and get started. We're going to give a few, uh, just a few seconds here for people to get settled and we'll be right back with you. All right. Welcome, welcome. You know, I'm going to give folks just another minute here to get started. If you're in the audience here today, uh, this is the Community Power Accelerator Prize. This is for round two of the Community Power Accelerator Prize. Um, if you're waiting for us to get started, we have a QR code here that's up in the top left corner to that's going to take you directly to the Hero X page. You're going to hear me talk about it a whole lot during this webinar. But if you want to join the prize, you want to follow the prize, you're generally interested, go ahead and scan that. That's going to take you to our Hero X page. Go ahead and give that a follow. And um, that is the best way to stay engaged on an ongoing basis. Uh, well, let's see here. We're about a minute after, so let's go ahead and dive in. Hi, my name is Emily Evans. I'm from the National Renewable Energy Lab, and I am the prize lead on the Community Power Accelerator Prize for the round two competition. Um, I'm joined today by Ali Robbins from the U.S. Department of Energy National Community Solar Partnership, and we are so happy to be here talking to you today about the prize. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, a couple of quick housekeeping items before we get started. There's a couple of different options for audio. If your computer's not working most times, if you call in, you're able to switch to phone audio and listen in. Um, if you would like to ask a question, we will be taking live Q&A questions at the end of today's webinar. Please go ahead and enter that into the Q&A box and not the chat. The questions do tend to get lost in the chat and we want to make sure that we capture everyone's question. We will certainly do our best to answer all the questions that we receive here today, but if we don't get to your question or it gets lost in the chat, we will certainly be posting a copy of the response to your question as well as all questions received in the FAQs. If you are having trouble with this webinar, um, if you're having technical dif difficulties, um, we will be posting a, record a recording of this webinar that you are free to watch after the fact. And of course, we are always here um, and um, here and available to answer your questions. So what we're going to copy or what we're going to cover today is um, we're going to provide an overview of the National Community Solar Partnership and Community Power Accelerator uh, Program Overview, kind of ground you in the foundation of why we're here and what we're hoping to achieve with the entirety of the NCSP program as well as the Accelerator program and with the prize. Then we're going to talk about the an overview of the prize itself, what we're looking um, who is it for? What are we hoping to fund? We'll then do a deep dive into the phase one ready contest, I'll give you everything you need to know to get started. And then we'll uh, briefly talk about phases two and three so you know what to expect in later phases. We'll then wrap up um, with all the action items that you need to know to get started. And then we'll take any questions with the time that we have remaining. First, um, I would like to say that the American Made program is really proud to host the Community Power Accelerator Prize. Here on the American Made team, we like to say that this program is your fast track to the clean energy revolution. If you haven't heard of us, us before, you haven't participated in an American Made Prize, the Community Power Accelerator is just one of many amazing prizes um, that we have on offer. If you would like to check out our other prizes, you can find them at AmericanMadeChallenges.org. All right, and now it's my pleasure to hand things over to Ali Robbins to talk to us about the National Community Solar Partnership and Community Power Accelerator Overview. Ali, over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. 
And hello, everyone. I really appreciate you joining us today. I'm Allie Robbins. I'm a contractor supporting the US Department of Energy's National Community Solar Partnership. So I'm gonna walk you a little bit uh, through what the NCSP is, what we do, our thinking behind our work, and then I'm gonna get into the nitty gritty details about what the Community Power Accelerator does. So next slide, please. To level set where we are right now with the National Community Solar Partnership, we aim to make community solar more accessible and prevalent within the United States. We wanna see 5 million households powered by community solar with $1 billion in energy savings by 2025. We did a ton of stakeholder engagement over the last couple of years to help color in the picture about what the Community Power Accelerator Prize is trying to accomplish. So as we all know, when we set a goal, we have to create steps to make sure that we're addressing the challenges and barriers that are going to help us meet that goal. And that's really where this pathway to success was created. There are five major elements on the pathway, some of which are a little bit more you know, central to what the Community Power Accelerator does, which I'll get to in a minute. But starting with our technical expertise and capacity building, our technical assistance program is rooted here. It is a larger effort that aims to build out the community's technical expertise and operational capacity. We heard time and again that businesses, especially businesses that are new to community solar, really need technical assistance and support. So next is our state engagement. We probably all know that we can't be successful in this clean energy revolution without state markets. So we're frequently asking ourselves how we can support community solar success within individual states. Our third element, which is where the Community Power Accelerator comes in, is access to capital. We heard from stakeholders that there is a fundamental challenge with being able to have readily accessible funders who are able to provide capital for community solar projects. So we'll spend a lot of our time today talking in that lane. And just to say briefly, customer engagement is more from a business acquisition and management side of things, as well as consumer protections. So how are we ensuring that customers know and trust their products and that those products are having some thoughtfulness behind what is being offered to subscribers and particularly the most vulnerable subscribers? And last but not least, our education component, we want everybody to know what community solar is. It's not yet a kitchen table topic and we're really hoping to get it there. So we want folks to be excited of the benefits of community solar. Now, all of these initiatives that we're talking about here are rooted in what we call meaningful benefits. So next slide, please. So, all of these meaningful benefits are really rooted in the priorities of Justice 40, but they also help us define what community solar is. And in the US, we really want community solar to be emulated by what it does. So do projects, portfolios, programs, resources have those meaningful benefits baked right into their methodology? So as you're considering applying for this prize, we really hope that you ask yourself, what do the bill savings look like for the communities that I'm working in? Do these projects provide a reduction of a minimum of 20% in annual electricity bills? Or are there some sort of financial credits that all residential subscribers to a project can receive? You might be asking yourself, how do I even reach low and moderate income households? Are we able to get their a parity with rooftop solar? Are your projects potentially helping reduce energy burdens, particularly for those at the lower income spectrum for households? We love to see projects that include a minimum of 50% subscribers from low to moderate income households. From the resilience side of things, and I know resilience can mean a lot of things, it's right at the you know, forefront of where our industry is at the moment, that can look like microgrids or battery storage or a combination of both. I think it's really important that we support projects at the distribution grid level and ultimately make our grid stronger. Um, you all know that there are facilities out there that you know are critical when we're, there's a potential grid outage. So we're always kind of orienting ourselves to strengthening grid operations, um, particularly at peak demand moments. Another option that you all should be considering as you're developing your community solar projects is looking at community ownership. 
there is no one size fits all model for community solar. So you might ask yourself, do folks have the opportunity to own the community solar facilities and have the opportunity to build wealth? And we really wanna make sure that community solar ultimately offers these avenues. And of course, last but not least, um, workforce development. So we changed this in the last year to include minority and women-owned businesses. We, the reality is, is that we need new organizations getting into this space who are truly serving their local communities. And so wanting to have that lens of entrepreneurship and supporting those businesses. You might be asking, do your projects advance higher wage opportunities, reduce income disparities, um, are you ensuring that there's like a train and available workforce that is reflective of the community, right? Um, these are all questions that we're sort of trying to crack the code on. And also, um, I think really important to point out is since this is part of the language that's used in the application process for this prize is our projects building trust and strengthening relationships with businesses that are owned by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals, otherwise known as SETIs. So next slide, please. Great. Now to get a bit more granular on why we're all here today, the Community Power Accelerator. Since we've heard from stakeholders that access to capital is really the critical missing piece of the community solar puzzle, we sought to standardize equitable access to financing. We worked with over 60 lending institutions to understand the unique challenges that community solar poses to better incorporate those meaningful benefits into real financeable projects. The platform slash website acts as a resource to help expand capacity and expertise for community-led programs, and particularly help provide um, with the development of new community solar facilities. We attempt to back up this connection resource by expanding capacity and expertise for organizations that are looking to build community solar projects, since at the end of the day, hopefully all of you on this call are gonna be doing that development. And we view these resources as acting in tandem and cultivating a pipeline of projects that incorporate meaningful benefits that we talked about in the earlier slide and meet the needs of both financiers and community solar project developers. We need more community solar projects financed and we think that the accelerator helps us get there. So next slide, please. Awesome. So to give you a flavor of who all the players are on the Community Power Accelerator, we have this beautiful rainbow slide. As you can see, it really covers the gamut of who you would want in the room to make a community solar project come to fruition. So all different types of financiers, lenders, philanthropy, as well as, you know, the developers, the folks who are putting the shovels into the ground or maybe even have the rooftop space like community based organizations. And then there's the sort of the technical expertise and support side. So the NCSP team, the rest of my team are on the accelerator to help you shepherd your projects and get them built and um, hopefully with those meaningful benefits baked right in. So next slide, please. So to talk about the mechanisms behind the accelerator, everyone is coming to the table agreeing to infuse projects with those meaningful benefits, and they connect on our website, our online platform. For those of you that are new to Community Solar and just getting started, we've created a checklist and a workbook that accompanies projects going through the accelerator. So this is really to help those developing projects understand how to walk the talk when it comes to penciling out projects and making sure that they reach all the various different benchmarks that financiers need to see in order to fund your project. Our partners at the University of New Hampshire created our learning lab, which we'll get more in depth into in just another slide. And that really helps shape the education requirements of the accelerator. It's an amazing virtual live instructor led course that provides soup to nuts on how to get community solar projects to fruition. And I think it's really one of the biggest benefits of getting to participate in the prize is learning from the cohorts of the folks that you're gonna be in class with. We also created the Philanthropy Ready Guide. This is to offer tips, tips, or tips, tricks, and suggestions uh, for developers who wish to explore funding opportunities via philanthropic givers. 
There's also our technical assistance program, on, which we talked a little bit about, and that's a more on the knowledge on the individual one-to-one -one basis. And of course, there's the $10 million in prize funding, which Emily Evans will get into the, the nitty gritty details just shortly. And that really shows the proof of concept of what the accelerator is. So next slide, please. So our online platform, it's all about connection with the folks of the ecosystem that we talked about just a second ago. And here is where you're going to post your projects onto the accelerator and match with potential funders based on the criteria that your project has. So, okay, if you have tuned out to me and you have not paid attention to the last couple of things I've been saying, listen in right now. You do not have to be a winner of this prize to use the accelerator. Go sign up today, get your projects put onto the accelerator that are currently in development and get connected with funders. The link is right there at the bottom in the right-hand corner. It's communitypower.energy.gov. I want you to do it right now. You do not need the prize to use this platform. Okay, next slide. Cool. So the Learning Lab, um, back to the prize. The Learning Lab is for this prize court is going to run from January 25th to March 28th. Again, it is a live instructor-led course that's held virtually. It also features guest lectures and expert speakers and does include homework assignments. Um, so for those weekly live Zoom sessions, they're gonna be held on Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. And next slide, please. So technical assistance, another major benefit of this prize is our technical assistance programming. Say you have a particularly sticky question about siting or interconnection, here's your opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with our team of experts to help you iron out those questions. And those experts will help you go through that credit ready checklist and the workbook, and also help you with your project profiles getting onto the accelerator as well. So awesome, great resource. We're so happy to be able to provide it. Next slide, please. Okay, our credit ready workbook. Um, again, this is a step-by-step -step guide as to making your projects come to fruition. The workbook includes a list of rigorous project and program requirements that investors really look for before they're willing to cut the check, right? Um, so this includes information about system size, siting control and zoning, ownership, capital structure, revenue, and costs. And if you don't know what some of those terms are, that is okay. That's why this workbook exists is to teach you what they mean. Uh, teams are gonna use this credit ready workbook to create and refine a digital project profile on the platform as well. And the, the skinny of this is that I really like to think of the workbook as more of a cheat sheet. So you know what investors are looking for in terms of getting those community solar projects to fruition. So next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, and we also know that um, investors who are, you know, sometimes it's not all about private finance, right? There are mission aligned philanthropic givers out there and it's a totally different universe when you're speaking to their motivations versus traditional private finance. So we've created a resource for you to up your game when you're speaking to philanthropy. The guide is public, you can use it today. I highly encourage you all to go take a look and I'll just have the next slide pulled up, please. I'm almost done. Thanks for sticking with me. Okay, and I just wanna say thank you to our partners on the Accelerator. New folks are joining weekly, so this is by no, no means exhaustive. This is just our inaugural list of capital partners. And we currently have $5 billion committed from private finance to fund projects that are on the Accelerator. So again, sorry to make this plug, um, but you can start using the Accelerator today and find your financing match. And I highly encourage you to do so. And thank you for letting me speak to you all. It's always such a pleasure to do these. And I look forward to answering y'all's questions questions. So back over to Emily. Thanks, Sally. Really appreciate that overview. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about the Community Power Accelerator Prize. So the prize is, a, is um, so this is first and foremost, 
foremost, this is our round two. So this is our second round. We ran a first round of this prize that is still ongoing. Round one is closed, but round two is totally open. It's open to all eligible competitors. If you competed in round one and you were unsuccessful, you are 100% eligible to um, to compete in round two. So if you applied to round one, if you were not successful, I would highly encourage you to compete in round two. Uh, Rick, I do see that you have your hand up. Unfortunately, I'm not able to take questions at your time. Please put your questions in the Q&A and I'd be more than happy to answer it at the end of today's presentation. All right, but the Community Power Accelerator Round 2 prize, it's a $10 million three-phase prize. The prize is designed to really support uh, new and emerging and expanding communi community solar developers as well as co-developers to learn, participate, and grow multiple successful community solar projects. By the end of this prize, we're hoping that our competitors will be ready to engage really fully and wholeheartedly in that Community Power Accelerator online platform, which really is our way of saying, hey, we want to get your projects from pre-development to the spot where you're ready to start asking for financing. Uh, the three-phase prize increases the number of equitable community solar projects by providing funding. We know it takes money to get money, so we are providing that up, that almost kind of upfront funding for you to support your team. Uh, tools and resources. Ali just walked us through a whole bunch of tools and resources. Uh, definitely not the least of which is the in-person learning lab. That's an incredible opportunity that teams will get to participate in. Uh, training. We're going to be providing you with training with the learning lab, free consulting, technical assistance, pr uh, prize participants and prize winners are really on the fast track to getting those tools and resources and technical assistance coaching. It's a wonderful opportunity and I really hope that you take advantage of it. So like I said, $10 million in prizes. Uh, it's a three phase prize and the first phase of the prize, we will be awarding up to 25 teams with $50,000 each. And the really cool thing about prizes is that that $50,000 $50, is for work that has already been completed. So we're essentially giving you $50,000 for you to fill out the phase one submission form. Tell us about who you are, what you want to accomplish, what your profile, what your project pipeline looks like. And if you get selected, you're going to get $50,000. You can use that $50,000 however you see fit. Um, you know, smart teams that want to go on and be successful in phases two and three are going to reinvest that funding in their team, in their work to work on that pre-development. But there's no there's no milestones, there's no deliver, li, deliverables attached. You can use that prize funding however you see fit. Another great feature of this Community Power Accelerator Prize is that there's no further down select after phase one. Once you make it into phase one, as long as you meet the goals in phase two and phase three, you are eligible for a prize award. So you're not really competing with your fellow prize cohort members. You're really just trying to meet those milestones. So if you meet the milestones in phase two, we're going to give you $200,000. And again, same, it's that same deal. It's no strings attached. It's for the work that you've already completed. And in phase three, it's another $150,000 once you receive financing. Next slide. So like I said, there's three phases to this prize, phase one ready. We're really looking to identify those new or expanding community solar developers and co-developers with a high potential to develop at least one megawatt aggregate of equitable community solar projects. So equitable, meaning that you are incorporating those meaningful benefits that Ali was just talking about. Then in the second um, in the second phase, the set phase, we're going to send all of our competitors through that 10 week learning lab course that starts in January. That's 10 weeks of in person, really kind of deep dive um, training on how to develop successful community solar partnerships. You will then work on pre development activities and getting your projects ready for investment. Once you're there, you will then 
um, if you're successful, you will then be awarded and then you'll move into phase three. And in phase three, we're asking that our competitors fully engage on the accelerator platform, identify the funding and financing that they need to develop at least two of their projects um, or more, depending on what you propose as part of your portfolio which we'll talk about more in just a moment. Once you have gained 100% financing for your projects, you will then complete another submission and then it's a, another prize award of $150,000. So you might be out there out, um, asking if you can participate, is this prize for you? And there's some basic eligibility requirements that you should be aware of. First, the Community Power Accelerator Prize is open to U.S. community solar developers, including new developers and experienced developers alike. If you are expanding your community solar operations, this prize is for you. If you are a solar developer, this prize is for you. If you are a community-based organization that wants to include community solar and maybe partner with a developer, um, maybe you're a real estate um, real estate developer and you have a large portfolio here, this prize is for you. Again, wanting to underscore that we are seeking developers that have the desire and ambition to develop, I should say, developers and other organizations to develop and finance a project portfolio of at least one megawatt of community solar with meaningful benefits. It also must be a minimum of two projects. So you can't just do one project, it's got to be two projects. Um, single projects are not eligible for this prize. Um, additionally, we are seeking organizations that have the ambition to scale their community solar portfolio beyond the scope of this prize. So yes, we're asking for at least one megawatt and a minimum of, of two projects, but we are really truly at the heart of things looking for organizations that want to grow and scale beyond the prize. We're training you how to do the pre-development and get all your ducks in a row for financing, how to go out and work with financers to get this funding. And then we wanna see you go out into the world and continue to grow as a community solar developer. Here's a list of organizations, kind of top through this on the last slide a little bit, that could certainly be a part of this prize. We want you to be able to see yourself in this prize. So again, community-based organization, multifamily affordable housing providers, um, local municipal governments, intermediary organizations, CDFIs, general contractors, um, other large real estate holders, socially and economically disadvantaged individuals, co-developers. If you are out there and you are based in the US and you want to develop community solar, this prize is for you. And I am so pleased that we have partnered with our Power Connector ADL Ventures to support competitors in phase one of this prize. ADL Ventures is an organization. They help us out on a lot of our different prizes um, and they're really there to help support you be successful in this prize. We work very closely with them. They deeply understand this prize, they understand the space, and they're here to help you. So reach out to them, ask questions about the prize, receive feedback on your submission materials, participate in upcoming teaming events. Um, actually, those teaming events have already taken place, but we do have teaming resources up on Hero X. Um, those I'll show you in just a minute when we do our live Hero X demo where you can find that, but there are teaming resources. ADL can also help you with teaming on a one-to-one -one basis um, and so much more. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Their email is matthew.paul at adlventures.com or we can always help to connect you. All right, so that's a little bit about what the prize is overall. Hopefully you understand the scope. Let's now dive into the phase one ready and everything that you need to know to be successful in the first competition. All right. The phase one ready contest is the first in three stage contest that has a total of one, uh, $1,250,000 in cash prizes that works out to about 25 awards that each receive $50,000. Uh, the, our goal in the first phase of Ready, we talked about this, is really just to identify who is going to be successful in this prize. Again, we're looking for new and expanding community solar project developers, co-developers, community-based organizations that have that drive to develop community solar. 
competitors may propose to develop and seek financing for more than two projects in that one megawatt minimum. You can think of the two projects in the one megawatt in aggregate minimum as kind of the the minimum here. That's what we're asking that you commit to doing under the course of the prize. But you can absolutely say, hey, I want to develop three projects. I want to develop 10 megawatts of community solar. I want to develop 20 megawatts. Go crazy. Um, but keep in mind that what you propose in phase one, and this is different from round one if you participated, what you propose to do in phase one, we're going to hold you accountable to uh, completing in phases two and three. So if you're proposing three projects, four projects, we're going to ask that you continue to develop that same number of projects, same number of megawatts. Obviously, we understand that projects change, things change, um, but that's really what we're, that's where your bar is going to be for the rest of phase two. Certainly, larger portfolios are desirable uh, for selection, but I want to count yourself out if you're thinking, hey, I'm brand new to the space and I want to develop just the two with the one megawatt. That's what I feel like I can accomplish. That is totally fine and will be given uh, equal consideration. All right, logistics. We are um, we're definitely towards the end of phase one. There is absolutely still time to apply. If this is the first time that you're hearing about the prize, our submission deadline is October 4th at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, the application is not, it's, it's not a hard application in phase one. It's about five pages. We're gonna ask you to describe your portfolio, who you are, create a summary slide, um, but you absolutely still have time to put that together. Uh, we are anticipating a winner announcement around December 2024. So deadline, October 4th, 5 p.m. Don't miss it. And we'll be announcing winners in December. In December, excuse me. Uh, read the official rules. The official rules can be found at HeroX.com forward slash community power accelerator round two. Uh, Kaylee or Carly, if you're able to drop that link in the chat, that would be great. Otherwise, I will show you where to find that when we do the HeroX demo. Uh, and then when you go to enter phase one, you'll enter your phase one submission by clicking on the submission form that is on HeroX, and it's the solve this challenge button. That's going to take you to the submission form. Again, I will show you how to find that. All right, so let's go ahead. If I can find my window, here we go. Um, Carly, I'm going to be taking control here, and we're going to be taking a look at Hero X in some greater depth here. All right, so here we are on Hero X. You'll notice the Hero X URL is here, herox.com forward slash community power accelerator round two. Um, you'll know you're in the right place because you're going to have this red box here. If you happen to go to the wrong one, let's say you're going to round two, or sorry, round one, it's going to look something like this. Uh, you'll get a pop up, you'll see that this picture looks different. And so make sure that you're going to round two. Round one is closed to new competitors, round two is open to new competitors. So this is where you want to be. The first thing you'll want to do is create a Hero, Hero X account. I already am logged into my account here, so I'm not going to do that, but it's pretty straightforward. And then the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the prize. Following the prize is incredibly important. Um, it's going to make sure that you get all of the news and updates and deadline reminders and, hey, we have this new resource posted, be aware of it. Um, very, very important. So if you have not yet followed the Community Power Accelerator Prize round two, even if you're following round one, you also need to follow round two. Click on that follow button to make sure that you stay up to date. Your next step, step as we said, when you want to apply for this prize, you're going to click on the solve this challenge button. It's going to take you through to the competitor agreement. You have the option to create your own team. You can join a team or you can compete individually. I mean, just compete individually here. And then you're going to see that this button changes. So you have the option to join a team or begin your entry. I'm gonna begin my entry and it's going to take me to the submission form. 
So here you will find the submission form, title, short description, image, optional, um, the eligibility acknowledgement, make sure that you're eligible for the prize. And then you're going to fill out some basic information about your organization, upload your submission package, let us know if you win, who we're going to pay, answer some voluntary self-identification questions, and then click on save and preview. And then once you have this all filled out, it's going to change to submit. You are absolutely allowed to start your application and go back to it. There's that save fu function, and you can do that up until October 4th. Down here in the middle, where you have a series of tabs, there's summary, timeline is going to tell you when all the important dates are, updates, you can go back through and read all of the important updates that this prize has had. There is a Hero X form, if you want to connect with your fellow competitors, ask a question, we monitor this form. Check out the teams, other innovators who are thinking about competing entries. Um, this will be blank until we make submissions, um, until we announce winners. And there are some elements of this mission that will be made public. We'll make that, those public here. And then probably one of the more important tabs is the re resources tab. This is where you're going to find the official rules, the teaming form. If you're interested in finding a team or connecting with someone, you will be able to do that here. You can also just go straight to the database. Hopefully this just opens. So here's a whole database of organizations who are looking to get new partners, partner with someone, they have something that they want to provide. If you are out there and you're like, oh man, I just don't wanna go at it alone, go here. Um, and again, you can access this through Hero X. And then of course, read the official rules. Um, you can view the webinar recording from our last webinar. Here's a link to the Introduction to Community Solar course. This is required for your phase one application. If you did not take it previously under the last round, you'll need to take this Introduction to Community Solar course. And then a few uh, templates just to help your submission get started. We have a summary site, slide template, a phase one template for your narrative, as well as the portfolio narrative. Finally, uh, the FAQ tab, you'll be able to see some basic FAQs, but then we also have our broader FAQs here on Google. So you can go, if you have a question, chances are somebody has already asked it. So go check it out. This is where we'll also be posting the answers to all the questions that are asked today. So with that, I will hand the screen share back over to Carly. Carly, if you want to take it. There you go, awesome, thank you. All right, so again, the number one thing you should be doing today is following Hero X um, and getting ready for that submission deadline. All right, let's talk about what you need to submit for the phase one ready contest. There's gonna be there's gonna be five submission items for the phase one of ready contest. It's gonna be a cover page. That's just questions in the Hero X form, no biggie. Uh, portfolio narrative, we're gonna ask you for the exact prizes that you seek to develop under the course of the prize. A PowerPoint summary slide. Again, we have a template for that that will be made public. Evidence of completion of your intro to community solar course. Again, this is not the 10 week course. This is an online course that you can start and stop whenever. We'll talk about that in more in just a moment. And then finally, your narrative, where you're going to tell us about who you are, why you want to expand or become a community solar developer, and the portfolio that you want to develop. So cover page, we already talked about this, just some basic information about who you are. Next slide. Summary slide. You know, this is really just, you can think of this almost as your handshake with our expert reviewers. You know, tell us about who you are, what you want to do, high level overview. Again, this will be made public, so make sure you don't put any um, specific information that you wouldn't want shared broadly on the internet. Portfolio narrative. So this is a really big part and something you should definitely focus on in 
your portfolio. So we're going to ask you to tell us about your community, um, your past and current portfolio. What if any community solar or other solar projects have you helped to develop developed to date. If you haven't developed any solar community solar, that is totally fine. Tell us about other projects that you have done. Uh, we've heard about projects where they're installing Wi Fi, um, Wi Fi cell towers, um, all sorts of different projects. Basically, you know, think about how you can um, tie your, the experience that you do have to the work that, that you want to be doing as a community solar developer or co-developer. We're also very interested in the total capacity of your community solar projects that you have helped develop to date or um, other projects that you've helped develop to date, as well as the states and cities where any operational community solar projects are located. Again, that's all past and current. And then almost more important is your planned portfolio for what you want to develop under the course of the prize. And this is a slight change that we made from round one to round two, where we're asking for you to tell us in very specific detail, what projects are you going to develop under the course of the prize and what stage are they at? So we're gonna ask you for details about things like, do you have site control? Have you done grid impact? your grid impact study have you are you you know way down the line but you know have you started the process of interconnection um that's not to say you have to have met these milestones already you're going to be asked to meet those milestones during the course of the prize but it's really helpful for us to get an idea about where your portfolio is at and where you're starting from are you starting from i have a friend that has a a, a space that I want to develop into community solar? Do you have site control? Do you already have this in place? We just really want to get a sense and get to know you and your planned portfolio. Again, underlining that you must have a minimum of two projects that aggregate, that total in aggregate at least one megawatt of power. If you do not have two projects and one megawatt, your submission is not going to be counted as eligible. So very important. And again, you can propose more than two projects more than one megawatt, but you will be held to that benchmark in phases two and three. And that is another change from round one. So if you are resubmitting, which I highly encourage you to do, uh, definitely take a look at what you submitted last time and make those updates. Introduction to community source. So, sorry, introduction to community solar. You know, uh, we have developed in partnership with the University of New Hampshire, the introduction to community solar course, which is intended to help teams really understand how to become a community solar developer, as well as what the five meaningful benefits are. This is a great resource for you, especially if you're brand new to this space, um, to really just help set the foundation. The course is approximately three to four hours. It includes videos, reading assignments, and as well as as a self-assessment, you must complete all of the components to get full credit. Um, and it will take you about three to four hours. You can start and stop whenever, but it must be completed before October 4th. Um, we'll be asking you to submit the email, the email that you use to register for the course, and we'll double check that you completed it. Um, again, this is a minimum requirement. Either you've done it or you haven't. Highly encourage you to get started with that early. Um, the link here on the on the PowerPoint, we'll take you to the sign-up form, and hopefully we can drop that into the chat as well. All right. All right, the last really big important piece of your submission is the narrative. There is a 3,500 word maximum. That works out to about seven pages of content. Um, and we're going to ask you to answer questions in these three areas. First is organization and team. We want you to talk about your organization. What is your experience? Who's on your team? And how would your team benefit from participation in the Community Power Accelerator Prize? Why do you want to be here? Why, you know, why should, why should we select you? Um, then we would like you to add some additional detail. I know you have a narrative about your portfolio, but we want you, we wanted to give you space to talk about, hey, what's your plan to scale? What's your plan to develop your portfolio? Um, 
you know, what is your long-term vision? What are you hoping to achieve? Why did you choose the sites that you chose? Why are they important? All of that can go in the narrative and just kind of help paint that whole picture of why your team should be selected. And then finally, we're going to ask for details on underserved and disadvantaged community engagement. Uh, what is your a big focus of this prize is supporting underserved communities, especially in J40 tracks. Um, what is your plan to engage with and work with underserved and disadvantaged communities in which you plan to develop your community solar projects? Again, going back to those meaningful benefits, how are you going to meet those minimum benefits? How are you going to work with kind of hand in hand community engagement. Um, are you kind of swooping in and developing this project and leaving or are you really truly grounded in the community? Are you working with CBO organizations? All things that we want to hear about in your narrative. Ooh, uh, Carly, can you go back a slide? So that talks about scoring, but a couple things I want to point out here is that on the right hand side here, you're going to see a screenshot of a partial table. This table is going to be found in the official rules document. On the left, we're going to ask for exactly what we would like you to describe. It's optional, but they are suggested prompts and they map to the judging criteria on the right. The judging criteria on the right are positive scoring statements that expert reviewers will used to guide their evaluation of your submission. Next slide, Carly. So each one of those statements are going to be scored on a sliding scale between one to six. If a judge scores it a one, they're gonna say, I strongly disagree with that statement. If they score it a six, it will, it means that they strongly agree with that statement. There are three main categories, these aligned um, exactly to the narrative. One is organization and team, and that's worth 24 points. Category two is prize portfolio plan and future plans to scale. That is also 24 points. Category three is underserved and disadvantaged community engagement. That is 30 points. And there will be scoring statements that associate to each of those categories. If it were me, I would be looking very, very closely at that judging criteria and making sure that information is a in your narrative, in your portfolio description, uh, wherever I can put it and make sure that it's easy for judges to find. Don't make judges go and hunt for this information. Make it easy. Don't make them read between the lines. We want to make sure that we fully understand your submissions. Uh, the U.S. Department of Energy Solar, Solar Energy Technologies Office is the final judge um, and will make selection decisions based on expert reviewer scores, comments, and program policy factors, all of which can be found in the official rules document. Uh, a quick note on program policy factors before we talk about phases two and three. Um, these are factors that are largely outside of the control of our expert reviewers. These are things like geographic diversity of potential winners. Um, while multiple winner, uh, multiple winners can come from each state, there's no set limit or restriction on that. We don't necessarily want to fund 25 teams in California alone. We want to make sure that the East Coast is represented as well as the West Coast, as well as the Mountain West and Midwest. Um, so that is something that we'll look at when we're evaluating submissions, but everything kind of starts with those expert review scores. Um, other things we'll look at is like diversity in the project or program type and the, degree to, and the degree to which the submission supports and complements DOE's existing programs. A full list of program policy factors can be found in the appendix of the official rules. All right, phases two and three, what to expect. We're just gonna go through this real quickly and then we will get to Q&A. All right, phase two set. The main goals in the phase two set is to help get you through all of the pre-development work that you need to do before you get to financing. Uh, so that is going to really be two, maybe three components. First one is going to be that 10 week uh, virtual, but you know, live uh, learning lab course that's going to be taught by the University of New Hampshire. That is going to be a pass fail requirement in phase two sets to make sure that you're taking a look at your calendar um, and making sure that you are able to fully participate. Those dates are January 25th through March 28th. And then 
working on your credit ready workbook. Ali talked about this at the top at the top of the webinar um, and helping to really do those due diligence items that you need to get your project funded and off the ground. Um, teams will also be receiving technical assistance during this time. Uh, up to 25 teams will be eligible to receive 200K of cash awards. In the third phase set, this is where we're Again, we're asking teams to really engage full heartedly in the Community Power Accelerator and go out and seek the financing that they need to make their projects happen. Phase three is anticipated to begin in July 2024, shortly after phase two winners are announced. Again, we will be funding up to 25 teams to receive 150K of cash awards, and the phase three rules will be released in the very near future. Uh, again, highlighting that if you propose more than two projects, more than one megawatt of uh, of community solar in phase one, we will be asking you to get funding for your entire portfolio in phases three. In phase three, so while it's desirable and good to have more projects, a bigger portfolio, my advice to you would be to propose something that's going to set you up for success later on and make sure that you are able to achieve. All right, so hope. Hopefully you're out there, you are excited for this prize, you're excited to get out and develop community solar. It's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful community to get involved in. It's a great cause and we really want you to join and be successful in this prize. So before we get to Q&A, um, probably the last time I'll say it, sign up on HeroX, scan this QR code, follow, follow the link in the chat. Follow, follow, follow. It is your best way of making sure that you don't miss a thing on this prize because we absolutely want you to participate. Also, uh, join the National Community Solar Partnership if you haven't already. It's a great resource to connect you to the broader community solar portfolio. Talk with like-minded people. I've got Mobilize and the NCSP group on my phone and it's great to see those updates. People get help all the time. Wonderful, cannot recommend it enough. And then when you're ready to submit your phase one submission, make sure that you read the rules document. I know it's boring. I know it's long, but it's really important information and it's going to help set you up for success. Sign up for the introduction for, to community solar course. Do it now to get it out of your brain and um, get started. Make sure that you're not trying to do that at the last minute. Again, connect with ADL Ventures, get support for your application and make sure that you submit your phase one submission by October 4th at 5 p.m. Eastern. That is a hard uh, that is a hard deadline and it will uh, the submission form will close down right at 5 p.m. If you have any questions, feel free to drop those into the Q&A and we will get to those uh, next. If you have questions after today, go ahead and email solar.prize at nrel.gov with any questions. And we will leave this slide up and we will go to the Q&A if I can find my mouse. All right. First question. If a potential team, oh, and I will welcome Allie back to the floor to help answer questions. Thank you, Allie. I've been um, trying to get to some of them oh, pretty rapid fire. Oh, wow. <laughs> Allie's been busy. Uh, <laughs> I don't get to see the Q&A when I'm talking. Um, great job, Allie. All right. Let's go ahead and talk through some of these that have not been answered in the Q&A. First one is, if a potential team member was a prize winner, in round one, can they participate in round two? And the answer to that is no, but I would like to underscore that that is prize winner in round one. If you applied and you were a non-winner, you didn't win round one, you can absolutely try again and apply to round two. I highly encourage you to do so, but if you did win round one, um, you are not allowed to participate in round two. You could in theory partner with another organization and be on their team, but the other organization has to be the primary. All right, next question. The proposal language seems to use the term team, team, mem team member, partners, and co-developers differently. How do you define those terms? Isn't team member and partner interchangeable? And the answer to that is yes, yes. 
those are all interchangeable and all the same things, unless Ali, you have a different answer. No, I, I think this is a great piece of feedback. And I, I also just want to recognize that when we talk about team members specifically, um, we don't mean that in the colloquial way. We mean that on Hero X, right? Yes. Um, so, so when we're talking about whether or not somebody's going to be a, a co-developer on your project, I think that's more of a universal term that you might use to say like, okay, you're a community-based organization and your co-developer is a really experienced community solar developer. Um, but when we say team member, we really mean that on Hero X. All good points. Thank you, Allie. Uh, Ali, I think this next one might be for you. Uh, a key need for my organization is access to info and a process to understanding how to create a community owned community solar CSG. Yeah, those resources out there. What's CSG? Help me out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so this is a really tough question to answer, and I don't think we could possibly answer it in in the amount of time that we have. Um, we do have a ton of resources out there. Um, if someone can put in the chat, I don't think I can actually access the chat. Um, for our NCSP online community. Um, there are a bunch of resources there on what community ownership might look like. It's quite a broad phrase, because again, community ownership, you know, it, it looks in many different forms. Um, and so definitely check there, check our online platform. And then additionally, we have um, a webinar series that we did over the last six months where we convene an expert, a panelist to talk about what community ownership looks like um, on an individual project to project basis. So great question and thank you. And I think to, to bring this back to the prize, that's why our technical assistance aspect of this prize is so important because you know, you don't have a one size fits all approach. Um, so as you're working through those those really difficult questions, that's why we have those those experts to help you move your project along. Thank you, Ali. I appreciate that. Uh, definitely a plug for the NCSP and technical assistance. Um, let's see here. Next question: the fifty thousand dollar. Sorry, things keep moving around a bit. Uh, the fifty thousand dollar prize will be split among te the team members, but will be paid to the team leader. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. We will. There's a question on the submission form that says, "Hey, if you win, who are you? Who should we pay?" And that is the person that we're going to pay, and we're going to pay a hundred percent of the prize to that organization that person. Um, that person then can turn around and distribute that however they see fit, but that's how it works on 99% of prizes. All right, uh, next question is, how do we show proof that we've completed the intro to community solar class? Um, real easy, you're going to sign up with an email address to the intro to community solar class, uh, class, and then you are going to enter that same email into to the Hero X submission form, tell us the date that you completed the training and we'll do the rest. So no problem there. Um, hopefully that's relatively easy. Um, next question, if there's any additional funding in place from any federal sources, does that exclude the possibility of winning these here? And the answer is no. Um, you can absolutely also apply for this prize and do fund braiding to fund your projects. Next question, can the prize cover any non-solar related costs like stands and materials to ensure solar installation? So a big part of this prize is actually helping to connect you to financing to fund a lot of this. But to answer kind of the heart of your question, you can use your prize funding for whatever you want. Um, I will never come and ask you for uh, an accounting of how you used your prize funds. There are no milestones, there's no deliverables. Hopefully you take that $50,000 from the first phase, reinvest it wisely in your company, your organization, your team to complete those pre-development activities that you need to be successful in phases two and three. But at the end of the day, that money is yours to use however you see fit. Next question. And I should also mention here that as we're answering questions, I know that you can't really speak up and ask clarifications. Feel free to put those clarifications in the Q&A and we will do our best to get to them. Uh, next question is how important is letters of support? Letters of support are not 
required uh, for phase one. I will say, however, letters of support do you provide a whole lot of trust in your application, especially if you're working with a CBO, maybe you need a letter of support from the organization that is going to host your site for Community Solar. Anything that's going to lend credibility to your application is pretty darn important. And if you can get those letters of support, if it were me, I'd do everything I can to um, up my chances of success. So take that answer how you will. Um, but if you have letters of support that you can include and they're relevant to your application, I would certainly include them. Um, let's see here. Next question. Um, Ali, this one is for you. When will the findings from the stakeholder interviews be made available? Oh, you read my mind. I was just answering that. Um, so this is one of the things that I really don't like about Zoom is that I can't answer the question and put it in the chat at the same time. Um, so we have a ton of resources that are available on our .gov um, website, which I will um, ensure gets into the chat. So thank you. All right. Um, another question here. Uh, Actually, Emily, if we can, um, some, oh. some, I answered some questions. Um, I feel like my, uh, well, I guess we're at, aren't we at time? We are at time. Let me see. Did you see a question that you answered that you thought was particularly important that you want to raise up before um, we no, close things out? No, I think, um, I think if we can just, you know, reiterate that we're going to put these on the Hero X site so that folks can, um, see and interact with what questions were asked. Cause there were a couple, you know, like how is community solar defined? We'll, we'll make sure that those questions make their way up so that folks can see them. All right, well, that's all we have time for. Amazing questions. Thank you so much for everyone who has answered or has entered a question. If you have a question that we did not uh, that we did not answer or answer well or answer your question, feel free to drop us a line at solar.prize at nrl.gov and we will certainly get you the information that you need. Uh, nope, I lied last time. Sign up for the prize and follow it on HeroX. Uh, <laughs> absolutely very, very critical that you do that. Uh, make sure that you submit by October 4th. We are so excited that you are here and that you want to participate. And uh, yeah, this concludes our webinar. A huge thanks to Ali Robbins. Thank you so much for your support and talking to us today. Thanks too to Kaylee and Carly from the NRL American Aid team. Thank you for your support here on the background and making sure we got all the links in. And uh, yeah, this concludes our webinar. Hope everyone has a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, NRL team. Bye. <laughs>